um, I was trying to calm it down and kind of get to the core in the center or the heart of it. I want to show him yes. that it's okay, that no matter what he does here, he cannot touch. Okay. Because it'll dissipate the anger here, okay? Yes, okay. So we're going to just let him go as cold as he can. And I will be, and I'm going to show you how the heat's going to come back. Okay. Stand Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. He's going to go down a little bit more. He wants to get me cold. He knows yes. I hate cold. Yeah, it's go going ahead. down. Temperature's oh. going down. Go ahead. Go down some more. Go ahead. Now I'm going to give you heat. I have a, I'm reading an electromagnetic field here now. Oh, it just spiked. It just spiked. Derek, you okay? Yeah, I'm fine. Derek, don't do that. Just look at me. Oh, he's a tough one, isn't he? A little tough one, this guy. All right, what is it? Okay, if you have a message to give me, I will allow you to give it to me. He wants you to know that he was never really mean at heart, he says. That he just didn't know what he was doing. And I beg to differ with you because you did know what you were doing. Still dropping in temperature at 57. I know he is because he's also now has a friend of his in anger in another part of the house. <laughs> yeah. And he has called that friend here. Male okay. or female? Male mm -hmm. as well. And maybe a relative somewhere down the line, you know, that he knew maybe after he had died. got a little annoyed with me for playing with it. <laughs> so, and, um, and I have to excuse myself with that, um, you know, because as, a, as a, a good psychic, you never interfere with anyone or anyone, anything's life path, unless it's, um, it's extremely called for, because um, we don't have that right to do that. Uh. 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 Come to me. We just want to know what this is about. Derek, are you okay? Yes. Okay. Okay. You okay? Yeah. I'm fine. I'm already back down. Yeah. It's okay. I sod. It's okay. We just want to know what it is, what this is all about, and why if you if you feel that this is an intrusion here. And you have to call some other people. Why? Oh, uh, it's so cold here again. I would say it'd be that time. Let's see how we manifest. You can do this. Let's do this. I was pushed. Oh, yeah. It wanted me to know that uh, that was completely unacceptable, that it was in uh, no way, shape, or form ready or willing to listen to what I had to say. While the incident upstairs was taking place and Derek had been attacked and couldn't breathe, uh, to me that, that was pretty substantial because as a clairvoyant investigator, he should have been able to know that this was coming or to be able to push the entity away. However, he was physically attacked, could not breathe, and keeled over, and we thought that he was going to really have a problem breathing and could have died from that incident. When I've studied the tape and I've seen Linda McKenzie uh, attacked as well, there is a, a slight discrepancy due to the fact that, of course, Linda knows that the entity passed in front of her and did seem to push her out of the way. However, there was a small uh, stair there that Linda's feet uh, were knocked against and as she went back she stated that she had been pushed you know to the scientific community we could say well gee she merely tripped and she hit this other um, you know step and that was the end of it 
However, by Linda's explanation, and from seeing Derek attacked, and also the temperature gauge that Linda was holding in the corner was dropping very, very rapidly, there was definitely phenomena taking place. It threw me off balance, and now I don't know whether it pushed me or it was just the energy or electromagnetic energy as it passed by me that made me fall mad. And, and there's a child in here, a female, little girl, little child. I am freezing. Yeah. I am absolutely freezing. Besides the two Richards that we had located in the property um, that obviously had lived in the house a number of years ago, as well as built part of the house probably in the early 1600s, we also located a young girl that we identified by the name of Anne, eight years old. The entire team individually all found this young girl to be present. There's a, uh, the name of Anne comes to mind. I don't know if that's a family name or first name of a female. Oh, well, that was my father's sister. She was the only girl in the family. I think uh, five boys and one girl. And she, he died. This little girl's crying. What little girl? Hold on. In physical age, um, this girl, I feel, would be um, seven, eight, nine. Um, she hasn't reached nine now. She's looking forward to a nine, so she's eight. Yes, there is a little girl, and she is very sweet. She died very young. She died of tuberculosis. Do you know how old she is? Eight. And uh, she'd be eight, nine. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, oh my god, I just, I just saw, saw pigtails. Oh, really? Long pigtails. Yeah, um, I see dark here, but almost with red running through it, so like a, uh, red with pigtails. And she had a long flat. What? Flatted hair. Flatted pigtails. Yeah. Pigtails. She comes back in the house every once in a while because she had a special toy here that when she was dying, her mother had said she would bury with her. Um, and yet her, her, her mother oh. uh, and her mother didn't bury with her. So she's, uh, she oh. comes back to look for the toy. An entity is standing close by, and the entity is very, very upset. Chances are I'm going to become very, very upset as well. Did she just walk out? Dana? Did she just leave you, or is she still with you now? This little girl. Man, I have chills up my back. <laughs> What's the matter? Yeah, that's a girl. That's a girl. What's the matter with your nose, do you know? Hmm? What's the matter with her? It's okay. We won't hurt you. She's frightened. Yeah, yeah. Is there somebody that you're afraid of in there? She's like they're coming for her, I think. Yeah. They're coming for her. She's afraid. That's what I'm feeling. At the end of the investigation, when everybody basically left and <laughs> went back downstairs, I felt um, compelled to stay where I was. <laughs> so that I didn't get what she was. <laughs> and we know we're not going to do anything about it. And I was uh, uh, feeling overwhelmingly uh, upset and depressed. And, and it wasn't for myself. I, I don't think I was. Um, totally feeling things empathically anymore. Um, for example, I, I wasn't feeling the sadness from the little girl, and, and that, that's who I was in uh, communication with. But as an adult, and as a female, and as a former stepmother, I understand what it's like to hurt for a child, and um, I think I was processing that the information that I learned as an adult uh, would, a, as a mother figure would for, for a child, and it was devastating. Well, um, 
um, after everyone uh, disappeared uh, downstairs, um, Dana had come to me and asked if I would release the girl. So I asked uh, Derek to stand point, and, uh, and we did. And I took the little girl by the hand, and we brought her to uh, the window. Her mom was there, and I explained many things to her. And she was finally released, and I did see her go to her mom and uh, Derek. Um, it was a very tearful experience, because uh, both Derek and I saw the spirit leaving and going into the mother's arms, and that was really nice. So it was something good I did. One of the interesting things of Tung Hall was the fact that we found that the young girl, Anne, the eight-year-old, uh, was probably from the 18 or 1900s, yet the two Richards that we located had to be from the early 1600s because they're the ones that built the house. And I have had a major breakthrough in the field of parapsychology by finding out that entities that are earthbound are here in this plane of existence with us. No matter what period they're from, they still are aware of one another and can interact with one another, just like in Tong Hall. When we had the opportunity to go to Liverpool, I decided to investigate the Empire Theater where Derek was performing. You know, so many theaters have incredible history to them, and the actors die or commit suicide or uh, come back to keep performing. And so I, I thought maybe the Empire would be haunted as well. And of course, it was. Now the, the theater was, the original theater was built in 1865. It was the old Alexander Theatre. It was knocked down and rebuilt in 1923. Yeah. There's only one portion of the, the old theatre what exists, which is on what was stage right, as we are now. Some of the back wall of the, the stage and some of the side wall of the outside building. Yeah. And that's when it became the Empire Theatre, Moss, Moss Empires. Stage. I was born not far from here, about 400 yards, so I've always lived around here and I've always come to this theatre. Uh, I've been a stage manager for 10 years, worked here for 14. Since I've been here, it's been rumoured that there's been about five sightings of, you know, different things, uh, phantoms. A lot of your chances just to kind of get tuned into the building. There's not never been reported on this side of the stage, stage left. It's always been on the stage right, which is funny because in the night, in the mid-70s, it was rebuilt. And the, the, that's the only um, anything we've heard of is from that side. I, um, I feel an energy that comes in and out, and um, it is either a stagehand or someone that has, uh, that, that resides on the top of the catwalks up here. Well, if you were on that side of the, the stage, in the dressing rooms, you could hear people walk on above you, on the landings, and you didn't, there'd be nobody there, because I, I investigated a couple of times, because I've got to lock up the building, backstage anyway. And I, there'd, be nobody, there'd be nobody there. So, you know, we, we, that could never be, that couldn't be explained. seems to talk about is a young girl who fell from the circle, from the front of the circle. 
she's been seen where and mainly in the administration side of the, the theatre, which is the front of the house, um, in the corridors and also in the stalls bar. Well, I, I, I will agree with Linda in the fact that there is a young energy uh, female, but I don't sense it as we speak. Okay. Yeah, it's not here. Do you yeah, think, yeah, okay, yeah. but do you think that this is an active presence that comes through here? I would yes. say yes. yes. I, would say, I would agree with her and say yes. Okay. She's also been seen with another, with a, a man. They, now, we, we can't get whether he's got no eyes or black eyes. They, they, they can't ever work it out because no one stands, <laughs> no one stays around too long. And you said like 11, 12. So that's what I'm um, thinking. It could be a little younger. Yeah. Yeah. I don't pick up a name, however, but uh -huh. I do feel a young female. Yes, I, okay. I would say 10 ish, 11. She's supposed to be dressed in Victorian clothes. She's about eight. Eight to twelve, lovely blonde, blonde hair, long blonde hair, lovely looking girl. I think one of the most interesting points in the Empire was the fact that as the investigative team was down in the basement area, uh, we were down below the stage, a uh, floor or so underground, and uh, Linda and Peter found that there was a young girl that was haunting the property. And it wasn't that they had located her at the time. They all received that information and thought that there was a young girl present. One night, uh, a theater fireman was locking up, switching off front of house. And he went into the stalls bar to turn all the lights off. And as he came out this little room with all the switch, with the switch, bank of switches on, he came out this little room. And the young girl was standing there and she was crying. So we went up to her and said, you know, what's wrong? Are you lost? And uh, next minute, he turned around and this gentleman with the no eyes or black eyes, whatever, came towards the little girl, got hold of her hand, turned around, walked away and just disappeared as they went up the stairs. And we'd never seen a fireman since. We located this young entity and she took us all the way back through the basement area, up over the stage area, into the, the seating to show us where she died. Right here. Yeah. Right here. It's cold right here. Uh, just, just on a circle front, seat 10 on a circle front, that's where the young girl but we, we say she was dressed as a Victorian, in Victorian clothes, she fell from the circle front. Her mother had gone to the toilet and she was uh, panicking for her mother and she fell from the circle front and died in the stalls. You get a sense of someone falling from the balcony. Oh, really? Yeah, from I the do. balcony? From the balcony, I do. I've got this huge pain going right across. Here. From here. Like like a two by four. Bam! Right across. Really? Whoa. When we were down in the bottom section and we were walking, it, uh, all of a sudden it felt like somebody cracked me uh, across the back, across my shoulder uh, blades with a two by four a beam uh, of wood. And it wasn't, it hurt. Overall, we found that the Empire investigation was very successful due to the fact that we did locate an entity on site and we also were able to get historical information on the little girl's death and that she did fall off the balcony and die. One of the highlights of being at the Empire Theater, of course, was watching Derek Acora perform live on stage. But I also wanted to continue my investigation of clairvoyant team members. And I also thought about the historical properties that we had gone through already, where the skeptic might say, well, gee, you already read that information, or you have a book on Jack the Ripper. Well, in this respect, I wanted to prove to not only the scientific community, but the skeptical community, that these things are real and that there is life after death. So during the intermission of the show, I went on stage and asked the audience if someone would volunteer to let us conduct an investigation in their home and not tell us anything about the activity and that we would go in blind and we would tell them what goes on in their house. 
but we didn't anticipate anything like the investigation that we ended up doing. The investigation at the private residence in, in Liverpool was the most significant uh, to me. That one, I think, choked me up the most and, and uh, most often. Uh, it, was, it was the most significant. It, it, it was one that I went home feeling like, oh my God, I helped do something that was decent. My wife died five weeks ago. She died in the bedroom. She died of cancer. As I say, she died in bed. And when, we, when a coffin came home from the chapel arrest, the coffin was over there. So I put Nicola to bed, but I put it in our bed, in the bedroom. It's the, I, I, it's the house, it's when the family came down. I'd see her started coming out of her left eye, and it rolled right down her face. And I thought, that's strange. And somebody said they can call that the last tear. And around two o'clock, I hear the scream. So I thought, oh, Nicola's crying. I'll go and check her. And when I woke up, I thought she was just crying normal, but then she went into hysterics. And it took her like two, I'd say, about just over two hours to calm her down. And when we asked her, what was she crying for? She said somebody came over to tuck her in bed. And then it was a, like, I'd say, about a week after that, I find it difficult to go to sleep sometimes. I was lying in bed. And I heard the, the stairs creaking, but it was on every stair, and it was the way I used to help hang up the stairs. And I thought, that's just... And it was slow. And everything was the same, the same way. It's like when I had to lift, lift it on each stair. And as I said, it stopped when it got to the top. I don't know if it, if, if it was Anne's presence, if she must have sensed the fear coming from me. Because it, although I, I'd love to see Anne, I'd also be scared at the same time. And <clears throat> I noticed uh, when we were at the theater that uh, Nicola, she has her little... Uh, we were sitting on the sofa, of course, and all of a sudden the telephone rang. And he came back very quickly and said, gee, there was nobody there. And then he stated that that had happened several times, that the phone had rung and that no one was on the other end. And we're not quite sure today if it's an entity trying to communicate, or again, is it the phenomena caused by the presence of an entity that could make an electrical uh, charge and ring the telephone. I noticed last night when, when you were at the theater with us that your daughter has a little stuffed rabbit. Yes, she calls Snowy. Um, she seems to be very upset and, and talks to the animal, but then starts beating it up. Is this normal for her? Well, it, it's obvious that she lost the moon five weeks ago, and it's obvious that she knows as well that Anne should be here. Does she? Does she ever? Do you ever hear her speaking to someone and no one's there? I've heard her talking when she's been in the bedroom, mm -hmm. but she senses that something's not right. Mm -hmm. When we got to this young man's house, Derek became very upset and said, oh my God, there are lives at stake here, and we're going to have to be very careful. I knew that immediately, and what I decided to do was to bring in Derek first. The young man had come there to see him and trusted him more than any other team investigator. There's a man here that takes me. Oh, God. I don't know. This can I... All right, thank you. And he comes here to say hello to you. And he's just said here, Anne's OK. Anne is OK. You know Anne, please? Well, that's, that's Anne's name. Question. Um, <coughs> did you um, lay your good lady wife uh, under the window? I was over there. The yes. Was. She wants you to know, um, as she looks at herself now, um, she's as fit as a fiddle. Um, she should really be in the sleep state, but she's decided that she wanted to stay here. And bless her for wanting to stay here with her family. She left, uh, like most 
that leave untimely uh, a lot of unfinished business and she's very, very concerned about her child. Okay. What did you place around here? Um, Please. Yes. She's thanking you. Okay. She don't want to. She's very tearful for the babe. Yes. She wants me to talk to you quietly and privately over something. I don't mind that. Uh, yeah, so I don't feel it, it should be uh, broadcast in any way, but it would be of great help to you. So? Okay. Is it good or bad? Yeah, it's good. Sorry? It's good. I'm just going to say these words to you. It is why, it is worthwhile, believe me, <clears throat> to live on, okay? Okay. To live. You must live. Your aunt is telling you those things and thoughts. Okay. And she wants to see a lovely babe child grow into a full, beautiful lady. Okay. In the investigation of Nikki and his daughter, I find it really interesting that, you know, one of the most common experiences that people have of paranormal activity is when a friend or relative dies. Uh, most of the time, people have experiences that they relay to us and they say, you know, my grandmother passed away last week and I found her standing at the end of the bed and she communicated to me and told me that she's no longer in pain and that she is okay now. But she, she, with your approval, I mean, she's your lovely wife and a lovely daughter standing, that she does want to stay around a little bit longer, okay? She has been, as it pointed out to her, where she's going. The loved ones are staying here with her. Oh, and I've just been told, by the way, by Annie, okay? She's sorry, she's sorry. She, they will try very hard not to make commotion and noises. Okay? Now, when this happens, when they come into our atmosphere in numbers, a lot of things happen with electrical things. Even the likes of, you know, lights on and off at times, even water sometimes, and especially phones, okay? Especially phones. It's been um, it's happened uh, six times, I Yeah, but she's doing it. I thought, I thought it was someone messing about. No, she's doing it, okay? She watches as you walk, she follows you. She wants her partner settled. And you see, you know what happens? I tell you very sincerely, if you're distressed, it's natural, it's normal of your love and bereavement. However, you have got the knowledge now that bereavement is not the end, okay? Bereavement, all it is, you know, is a new beginning. It seems cruel, I know, of the boss to take Anne over at a tender age. However, he's got plans for her to do great work over there, okay? That's right. He has. But the thoughts that have come to you in your so much quieter times. Yeah. Do you understand me? And, in other words, can I be blunt but very honest and fair yeah, and yeah, truthful yeah. to you? Yeah. It's such a wrench to you that your lovely Anne has been taken over by God. And apparently Anne has given me the inclinations of saying that she has noticed since the passing, okay, of your great feeling of loneliness, okay? And thoughts of going about, oh, do I really want to stay here, you know? Uh, you know, I want to be with my aunt. Do you understand me? Yeah, all right, so uh, that, 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 one, that one frightens me because I know what you're saying, Derek. Well, look, I'm not here to frighten you. No, no, what I mean by that is I know what you're saying because that's why she mentioned me. Yeah, you're, you're, you're staying here, okay? I've been told. You, sir, are staying here yeah. and you're not leaving this God's air until past your 81st year going to your 87. You've got a lot of life and a lot of things to do in this life. But what you're on about is, what you, what you, well, I'm not going to say it in front of the cameras, but that did cross my mind. I know it did, because your aunt told me, but can I just say this to you? It's twice. Yes, but can I just say this to you? Your friendship with Anne and your love for Anne will never, ever perish. It can't, it's eternal. And Anne knows and she's excited over that. 
So I brought Linda in to the house next. And Linda's healing abilities actually made this man look about 10, 15 years younger. I did a lot of energy work with him. Um, I uh, wanted to soothe his heart, much like I did with um, Richard in Tung Hall and the entity. I wanted to soothe his heart without disturbing their process because they have to go through what they have to go through. It's their lives. And when Linda went through her healing techniques with young Nikki as well, we decided not to film that because, again, it's very personal, very sensitive. Not everything's for the camera. When Linda was finished, I brought Peter in, and Peter immediately walked in and said, the house is clear at this time. I feel that whatever he feels is uh, active will uh, soon diminish uh, as his grieving period subsides. That, that's what I'm feeling here. After Derek and, and Linda uh, worked with this guy, it, there was such a marked improvement in him. He, he looked so much younger, and he looked like, okay, I can survive this afternoon and get to tomorrow. The little girl who was um, incredibly wild and um, it seemed very angry and aggressive the night before, came out, um, I, w I played with her, I mean, was able to physically play with her a little bit. And what struck me the most was when we got into the cars and we left, we uh, had been in the car maybe half an hour, and I reached in my pocket, and this little girl had put her little box of candies in my pocket while I didn't see and didn't feel it. So um, I, I, think, I think that speaks volumes. When you can make a difference in one life, there's a domino effect. As a parapsychologist, I think that the investigation of England was very successful for many reasons. I find that the information that we have garnered through the years of conducting investigations all over the world seems to be very constant. Again, in England, uh, we did find properties that were active and that also had residual hauntings as well. We did find that there are layers of emotions as well as historical information and traumatic events that remain electromagnetically that the clairvoyant team could pick up on. Uh, everything from the houses being haunted and active today to battles taking place where the houses uh, never stood before. Something that ISPR is known for is to not just conduct investigations of ghosts, but we want to help the people that have these experiences and to help them through them and to make them better. Today, Nikki is doing much better. Uh, there is a benefit that we are holding for him coming up here in the next few weeks to help him get his life back together, to help him continue to put his little girl in school, uh, for him to get a new car so he can take her to school. And he is very excited about the possibilities of continuing his life now and raising his young daughter. And he knows that his wife has passed on without a physical body, but she remains today to be with him anyway. So he is very comforted by the fact that she is still living after death. Is there any hidden treasure in here? No. Oh. <laughs> I'm no. I'm a <laughs> bummer. I thought you'd give me a bit of hope, you know. <laughs>